All right, you ready? All right. What? You call yourself a super producer and you can't even start the session off right? Just giving you a hard time, Big Tez. Much love, man. I miss you and I hope that you're holding things down in Memphis and staying safe. Let's get back to the video. Happy holidays, everyone, from the crew at Legacy Studios. Well, I am the crew from me to you. I hope you're all doing great and having a wonderful holiday season. Before we get started, I just want to let you know that Big Tez is one of my best friends in the world, my big homie, so I can give him a little bit of a rough time. In his defense, this song was recorded four years ago when we were students at 
SAE Institute. And here we are four years later and I'm finally getting to mix this project. The artist, her name is Cash Diamonds and she happens to be Big Tez's sister. She actually has moved to South Carolina now, but I'm gonna get this to you guys, finally. The song is called Privilege. She's talking about how in today's world, it's a privilege for guys to be able to get to know her. And this is a hip hop song, so keep in mind that there may be some four letter words in there that you may not want to hear or may not like. If that's the case, just put your earmuffs on or just have some thick skin and get through it. There is a lot for me to show you here today. So if you are ready, let's go. What's up everybody? It is time to work on this mix. My plan for this video is to deconstruct things. I've already mixed the song, but I want to break it down for you piece by piece to show you what I did to take it from here to here. My thought process has been inspired by a video series that I've recently signed up for. It's called puremix.net. There's a lot of pros on there like Chris Lord Algae, Jakir King, Andrew Sheps, and one of my favorites, Fab DuPont. They're showing different processing techniques, mixing, mastering, and in a lot of the videos, they do a breakdown in what they call deconstructing. So that's what we're gonna do today. I've got my little handy notebook here to keep myself organized to tell you what we're gonna do. The first thing, my goal for this song was to really clean things up, add some clarity, add some punch to the overall mix, and add some depth, and just get levels right. And I really wanted to chase after that analog sound since this song was recorded on an analog console, a Toph ATB32. 32. 32 input analog console. Pretty sweet, intuitive, and easy to use. Step number two is the how. How are we going to accomplish step one? Breaking this down here a little further by gain staging. I'm going to throw a trim on every single track. Then we're going to combine things. We're going to add groups and buses and process that way. And then we'll use a variety of plugins to carve out space for other things to sit in that mix. We'll use EQ, compression, and some limiting. And then we'll use an all-in-one plugin by Sir Greg Wells. It's called Voice Centric. All right, so we've discussed that. Let's go ahead and get into the process to show you how we executed all of this. During my time at SAE Institute Nashville, I gained a wealth of knowledge. And one of those things is clients aren't just gonna be knocking and breaking your door down, wanting your services. So that's why I started this YouTube channel. For every student's final project, we were responsible for finding an artist, bringing them in, recording one to three songs and mixing and mastering that song for the final project. So this original session was recorded December 2nd of 2017. I met Tez in semester one and we instantly clicked when we had a lecture on EQ and we just hit it off, became great friends. He brought in his sister, Cash Diamonds. His brother, Tony, came in, did some vocals had some other artists come in to do the background vocals and he asked me if I would play live drums on this project. I said, of course, man, yeah, I got you. He said, cool, man, thanks a lot. Have at it, do whatever you want to do. So he gave me the overall track, I practiced to it. And in the beginning of the video, you actually saw us recording drums for the song with a cell phone. So here we are, four years later, I'm finally getting to this project to get it mixed and delivered to them. I want to show you what this song entails. But upon mixing this, I found out that this is definitely one of the bigger sessions that I've been involved on. When it comes to mixing, Pro Tools would give you 32 stereo buses to work with. I found out that wasn't enough for this project, so I actually had to add some more. Holy heck, that's crazy, it's a lot. So I'll go ahead and share with you the instrumentation on here. And as I said just a moment ago, part of the how of getting things from here to here was creating groups of buses. So let me show you this session now. We've got her vocals here. We've got a vocal bus. We've got a chorus and then some background vocals. We've got a background vocal bus. My friend Shane, who actually played electric guitar, he sang on this here. Then we've got uh, another bus. We've got sampled drums, sampled drum bus. Then we've got the acoustic drums. One thing we see here in the middle of this is a tom bus. So I created a bus for that, EQ some effects, the rest of our drums, drum bus, electric guitar, bus, harp, bus, strings, bus, 
keys, bus, bells, bus, and then we've got the bass. So the bass was initially recorded as a MIDI track. We converted that to audio. And in the mixing, I actually duplicated that, added some effects to make this really kind of try to stand out a little bit. I'll share that with you here in just a little bit. I think it's pretty cool. Then we've got our bass bus. Then we've got a band aux. So I've got things routed two different places to the band aux and then to the master fader. So that way we can do some processing here and there and really get this to sound a little bit better. Then we've got a couple other auxes and audio channels, a band verb, which is muted. So I don't think I've got anything on these three at all. Subs. So I took the bass guitar, routed them there, and I think I routed the kick drums here as well. We've got the click, which is muted, and then our master fader. So let's play this from the beginning to when the guitar comes in. I have Cool, so that was the intro. Let's play this from the beginning here and break this down piece by piece. So the first thing that comes in is this harp. So here's our harp channel. The trim boosts that just a little bit for it to sit in the mix. Added some Pro Q3. There are some really nasty mid range just harshness that I had to get in check and pull out. And then on our harp bus, Pro Q3 again, pulled out that low mid range and then check this out to smooth things out we've got a virtual tape machine back in the day when things were initially recorded like i said i wanted to get that analog feel and flavor things were recorded to tape here's a cool tidbit about me when i was approximately 12 years old my first album that i ever bought was the wayne's world soundtrack from like 1990 1992 and it was on a cassette tape and I wore that thing out, I wore it out, and I wore it out. It got stuck, I had to get the pencil out and everything. And I think I ended up buying it again when it came out on a CD. But this really smooths that out. And then the next thing that we have that comes in here is the uh, strings. So let's listen to that. And again, here's our trim. Pull that up just a little bit. There is a lot of real harshness here. You can see all these spikes. I had to get that in check and pull those out. On the string bus, same thing. Pretty big wide Q on that dip. Normally when it comes to EQ, you wanna make your cuts narrow and your boost wide, but there was a lot of information that was just harsh and just almost made your ears bleed. Then let's take a look at keys here. Of course, our trim, Pro Q3. There were some nasty mid-range in there we had to pull out and keep in check. And then again on the bus, the VTM smooths everything out. And here's our bells. So these were pretty harsh. There was a lot of high-end information. I put a shelf on those and just cut them out. Here's what it looks like. Yeah, there's that information with the shelf right there. And then we took all those lows out. All right, so there's those. And then let's talk about the bass. So here's the initial bass track. I actually had to add a lot of trim to get this to come up in the mix here. But here's the EQ that we use on this. Took all that low information, rolled it out. There's two frequencies right here. One at 81 hertz and the other was 183. It was just overwhelming and just too powerful. So pull those out and down here, roll some of that low end out there. Same EQ on the duplicate here, but check this out. Here's what I did to try to make things stand out. Here's some compression to bring things up. And you'll notice it has a wobbly or warble effect. What is that? Well, it's this right here. It's this Mooger Fugger and it gives us that effect and I use this pleasure trim preset 
And then to smooth things out, the J37 tape emulation. And then on the base bus, no EQ there because everything was in check on the other two channels. Then I used a Chris Lower Algae plugin, CLA bass, and then the J37 to smooth things out again. So in context with everything. What else do we have in here? The electric guitar. We've got to check this out. Here it is. So a lot of processing on this. On the trim, we actually had to reduce that a lot because it was recorded hot. And then here's the EQ. A lot of harshness, so much harshness. It just like made the ears bleed. Here we go. And I actually took a lot of that high end out right here. And then on the electric guitar bus, Pro Q3 again, pulled out all this mess. Then I added a CLA guitars. So reverb, delay, pitch, compression, treble, and bass all in one plugin. So that added that delay and effect. And then this is really unique. You don't see this a lot on this type of application. So when I was looking for compression, I couldn't really find anything that would keep things in check the way I needed it to or the way I wanted it to. So Waves has this plugin called Vocal Writer. You can throw it on a vocal track. It follows that vocal and really analyzes things and keeps that vocal sitting above the mix or where you want it. So I found this in my arsenal. I put that on this track and it really helped keep things in check and I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out. So there's that. And then that's pretty much all the instrumentation. Let's take a look at our drums here. There's a lot. Let me pull up a section here. And then we'll go through these one by one. And then we'll just solo the kick. Let's take all these plugins off here. Something interesting happened in the recording of this that I didn't know about until we came to mix it. Here's our trim. Got that to a good level. And then what I did was I added some EQ. But in this, I found out that there was like probably a faulty cable. So there was this buzz and hum in there. I'm like, oh man. But in the overall context of things, you couldn't really notice it. But we rolled things off here. Here's our fundamental. So that buzz is like right in here, but here's the dip to counteract that. And here's our boost at about 3,300. Then I did something else. I added a gate to this. Here's what it sounds like. Bypass. See how you could hear all the extra things in there, the, the snare and toms and the cymbal hit. So now you can just hear that kick drum. And then here's Pro Q3 again. And what I did was, here's right where that, uh, that buzz is. I pulled that out. So now that gives us a real tight, punchy kick drum with attack. And then we had a uh, kick out. So here's the EQ on that. We took all the high end. We just murdered it to right here. And then here's our fundamental at about 73 hertz. And we rolled out some of that muddy nastiness that we don't need in there, rumble and hum. We actually had three snare tracks. Here's our snare top. Pro Q3, rolled all that out. Fundamental, pull out the mid range. A nice boost here for some bark and attack. Let's take that off, bypass. in so it's really punchy it's got some attack and bite and bark to it now one thing i had on this this is bypass because this was the gate but what i found out whenever the uh hi-hat would come in like the cha 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 it would really make things choppy so i'm not using that gate there here is the eq for the second snare Cut that out, some boost, dip, boost on the snare three, similar EQ, but made everything a lot higher. 
And then again, we'll notice that that gate is totally bypassed because it really messed with the, uh, with the hi-hat end of the ch -ch 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 -ch. All right, let's take a look at these toms here. Let me find a section where those are coming in. And we had two toms here. We had just four toms, as you might have noticed in that video. Did some EQ. Here's our fundamental. Pulled out that mid-range. Another fundamental spike there. The low floor tom, same thing. However, the fundamental is lower, deeper pitch because it's a bigger drum. Here's the EQ for the floor tom, the second floor tom. Fundamentals down here at about 77 hertz because it's deeper instrument. And then I did something interesting. I put some gates on there and then on the tom bus, no EQ, but I did this. CLA drums. So I went with this tighten up. It's got some compression verb and a gate on there. So the toms sound like this. Yeah, beefy, fat, and round. So I actually didn't really do much when it came to the EQ on the overheads, but this room distort. Let's see what we did here. So this room distort, kind of interesting. We use a SM58 and put it above me when I was playing it. Here's the EQ for that. And then I found this distortion plugin and just went with a thin distortion off. Things are clear. You notice it just a little bit, but in context with things. drum sound good. Here's the EQ for that. I actually, on this high end, I pulled down things because the cymbals were just smashing and piercing. We looked at guitar, drums. Now let's take a look at the vocals here. So the first vocal that comes in is this. I can't sing, never have claimed to, but here it is. So I use the Greg Wells voice centric. Here's our gain. Uh, doublers actually enable, but not much added. And here's our verb. So it sounds like this. It ain't hard, hard. So that way we've got that little trail there. And then that's pretty consistent with all of these vocals. Now let's take a look at Cash's vocal here. So check this out on her lead vocal. Get down on your fucking knees and start thanking me. I'm the queen that you should be bowing down to fake. A lot of mid-range and high-end harshness we had to pull out. Wow. But then we added the voice centric in there too. And then on her bus right here, we'll just mute it so I know where it's at. I added the VTM to smooth everything out. And then I think on the EQ, yeah, we pulled out that mid-range. So uh, that's how we mix things from all the instrumentation, drums, keys, bells, Part, vocals, everything like that. So here's everything from beginning to end. Oh. 
are in use. BTM, smoothing things out. Yeah, there we go. One thing I didn't talk about was the master fader. Let's address that real quick. Insert number one, the SSL EV2. Use the brown flavor here. There's our lows, low mids, little dip on the high mids, some boost on the top end. Then we use a CLA mix down, went with a clear view just to make everything nice, clear, and crisp. And then we brought things together with the SSL bus compressor. Found a mastering default and then I kind of changed some things on my own there. Next we have to smooth things out is the VTM virtual tape machine. Then we have got a really cool one. This is a Brainworks or plug-in alliance that I just talked about last week. And this one is cool because it really allows you to visually see where you're sitting as far as loudness goes. I really like that and appreciate that. And then we've got a couple things here that are actually a little backwards, but this one here is called Hawkeye and it's a uh, audio analyzer. So your frequency spectrum here, your face, your wit, I like that a lot. And then we've got uh, this one here, and this was bypassed the whole time, so it was engaged. So what that allows you to do is it takes your mix, narrows it down to a mono channel. That way, if you're listening, things are thin and straight, but once you take that off or it's bypassed, everything sounds a lot more wider, a lot more open, a lot more natural sounding. Try mixing in mono. If you might have a cell phone, these only have like one speaker, like down here. If you're in an elevator, guess what? Just one speaker. If you're in a store shopping, just one tiny speaker. That's all in mono. If you can get your mix to sound good in mono, you can get it to sound great in stereo. And then for the overall effect, I have that bypass, but it's not in use. Uh, because this is the Studio 3 by Abbey Rhodes. Use my trusty HD 280 Pros and I use the mid fields here. So that is how we take a mix that sounded not very good from down here. We elevated that mix to be clear, punchy vocal sap right there in the mix. Pull that electric guitar down. It was shining, it has some verb, it has some delay, and it was great. Let me know what you think about this mix here. If you learned anything, if you're new, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate those thumbs up. Think about 
hitting that red subscribe button down there, become a part of the Legacy Studio family. I sure do appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching and have yourself a great holiday season and I will see you in the next one.